Mr. Riddle is an old-fashioned aristocrat. He invites a landscape designer, Bella, to do his chic country mansion. Okay. He says, your task is to plant seven trees. I will triple your paycheck if you find a way to plant exactly six rows of trees in a straight line. Also, each row should have three trees in particular. Do you have any idea how Bella can accomplish this task? Bella should plant three trees as the vertices of an equal triangle. Three more trees should be planted at the center of each side of the triangle. The last tree should be planted at the center, and voila! While working in Mr. Riddle's garden, Bella finds three hidden words. Can you see them too? There are three hidden words here, tree, farm, and plant. The local gardener is playing a quiz game. He keeps asking the same question to everyone he meets, but each time, the answer is different. Can you guess the question? The question that the gardener asks is, what's the time? Later that night, Bella is heading to the local nightclub. On the way, she spots three mistakes in the picture below. Can you see them too? December 32nd doesn't exist. There's no green light at the traffic signal. And this trolley doesn't have any rails. Bella's boyfriend, Tyler, is performing a show with his dancing group at 11 p.m. Bella is a little late. So, when she enters the nightclub, she sees Tyler and his crew on the stage. They're dancing in a straight line. At this very moment, Tyler is standing in the fourth position from both the front and back ends of the row. Can you figure out the number of dancers? There are seven people in Tyler's dancing group, including himself. Tyler was the fourth from both ends, which means three dancers were at the front and at the back. After the performance, Bella is wandering around the club and sees these two guys in the VIP section. Can you tell who's fake? The guy on the left, his reflection doesn't say anything, but the guy on the right is wearing a suit and has some cash in his pocket so he's probably just having a bad day. The next day, Bella receives an invitation to have dinner with Mr. Riddle. Mm. Bella agrees and arrives at his house in the evening. She enters the dining room and spots four weird things right away. Ah. Can you see them too? This candle has a purple flame. Someone is peeping through the eyes in this portrait. This fireplace burns without any wood. And finally, both hands of Mr. Riddle are left. During the dinner, Mr. Riddle tells Bella, I'm so grateful for your work. I decided to give you a gift if you manage to crack my puzzle. So listen carefully. I can be broken, even if you never pick me up or touch me. What am I? Can you help Bella solve this mystery? The correct answer is a promise. Bella cracks the riddle and receives the promised gift from Mr. Riddle. The gift has lots of keys, but it can never open a door. Oh. What is it? The correct answer is a piano. Bella enters Mr. Riddle's library. Suddenly, he locks the door. The windows are locked too, so Bella is trapped inside the room. She looks around and finds a secret exit. Yes! Can you see it too? Take a look at the floor. There's a door to the basement hidden under the carpet. In the basement, Bella finds a door that leads outside, but it's locked and requires a five-digit password. Do you have any idea how to open it?
The note on the wall has a hint. Each image contains a different number of colors. The rainbow has seven colors. The cloud, one. The bird, four. And so on. So the correct password is 17421. Bella escapes from Mr. Riddle's house and gets lost in the woods. There are three possible ways to cross this area. Unfortunately, only one is safe. Can you guess which one? Bella should pick the second path to survive. Bella arrives at the nearest village in the mountains. Hello. She enters the local diner to call the police, but she regrets her decision as soon as she gets inside. Ah. Why? This is a vampire village. None of the customers eats anything. And also, she's the only person who casts any shadow here. Ah. Bella runs away to the mountains and finds three tunnels. Unfortunately, each path is hiding some danger. There's a cage with hungry lions behind the first door. The second tunnel is filled with gas that's very toxic for any human. And there's a giant dragon waiting inside the third tunnel. Can you help Bella choose the safest option? Bella should choose the first tunnel. The lions are in the cage, so she can just walk by and escape. Now Bella needs to cross a fast-flowing mountain river by jumping from stone to stone. She struggles with choosing the last step. Can you help her? Each stone has a particular number. 1, 2, 4, 7, 11, 16. This sequence is formed by adding the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Therefore, the remaining stone should be 16 plus 6. So Bella should choose the stone 22. Finally, Bella finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a run, but only one of these guys is reliable. Can you guess who? The second guy's car has no license plate and it's been painted recently, so the car is probably stolen. Take a closer look at the third guy's hand. He's a zombie! So Bella should choose the first guy. Bella arrives home and finds out that someone had robbed her apartment. She calls the police and questions three neighbors. Ryan says, I think I heard weird noises from your apartment two hours ago, but I thought it was your TV. Peter says, uh, I noticed a suspicious delivery guy near your door about an hour ago when I was taking out the trash. And Emma says, I've just arrived from my business trip in London. I don't know what happened here. Hmm. Who's lying? Peter said he took out the trash an hour ago, but he still has a full garbage can in front of his door. And the flies around it tell us that this bag has been here for a while. Therefore, he's a liar. The next day, Bella enters a supermarket to buy some food. The manager complains that someone had stolen a watermelon. Oh, no. Bella spots the thief right away. What about you? This fake basketball player is the thief. The ball shouldn't have any zip. Bella is walking down the street. She passes by three guys who are busy washing their cars. In a while, Bella realizes that her wallet is gone. She returns to the guys and asks, Has anyone seen my wallet? All three guys answer no, but one of them is a thief. Can you guess who? It's the guy on the left. The level of water in his bucket increased after he threw Bella's wallet into it. Bella approaches the parking lot and finds out that someone had stolen her car. She calls the police. The officers begin to chase the thief. The light over the license plate of Bella's car isn't working. Also, the police car has a faulty headlight. But eventually, the officers succeed in catching the thief and return the car to Bella. How did they manage to catch the criminal? Yes. Do you have any ideas? It was 
daytime. Therefore, they didn't need any headlights or lights over the license plate. Bella comes home and opens her fridge to grab some snacks. Right away, she begins to yell at her boyfriend. Tyler, you ate my food again. Tyler replies, no, I didn't. Can you guess who's lying by looking at these two pictures? Tyler, he took these five items from the fridge. Annika received a letter where someone asked her out. The letter was sweet, but it wasn't signed, so she didn't know who it uh -oh. was. She was guessing three guys. All of them were her college friends. Who do you think asked Annika out? Look at this sign at the end of the letter. This guy has the exact same tattoo, so I bet that the letter is from him. An office was robbed and police arrived for an investigation. The money was stolen from a drawer, but there was no trace of breaking in. The lock was fine and the windows were all locked. Look around and try to guess how the robber broke in. Look at the ventilation gate. It's slightly open. The robber must have used this way to get into the office and get out. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be the robber who dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who? It's the man in the middle. Look at his badge. There's a picture of a woman on it. He must have put on the first pair of clothes he noticed. At daylight, someone painted a wall of a museum, and the police were looking for the person who did it just an hour after it happened. They were roaming the streets of their little town, and they found three suspects. Adam said that he'd been at work and just returned. Carter said that he'd been busy painting his fence. Blake said that she'd been walking her dog and didn't know anything about what had happened. Who is guilty? It's Carter. He has paint on his hands, and it indeed goes in line with his alibi that he was painting the fence. But his fence is red, and the paint on his hands is blue. Just like the painting on the museum's wall. Mrs. Roberts, a math teacher, returned to the classroom after visiting a principal's office and took a sip of her coffee. She had to spit it out immediately, because instead of coffee, there was blue ink inside. Can you tell which student pranked her? It's this one. Look at his hand. It has ink stains on it. Mrs. Taylor works in a selection committee of a big organization specialized in sustainable and green development. There is an open position for a researcher and she's looking through the applicants. Many of them are fake, either sent by underqualified people or generated by robots. Her task is to filter out real applicants and she needs your help. Let's start with this one. What do you think? Is it a real application? No, it doesn't seem so. This girl was born in 2003, so she's 19 years old. She's way too young to have a PhD. She must be lying. Okay, here's another one. What do you say? This seems to be another fake. Look at his birthday. There was no February 29th in 1991. This application must have been generated by a robot. Okay then, here's the next candidate for you. What's your call? This young lady seems fine. I'd recommend considering her. Here's another candidate. What do you say? seems fine to me too. Next one, this candidate. D 
Do you see something suspicious or is it all okay? Of course not. Look at the photo. It's some random photo of a cat. People don't use such pictures in their CVs. It must be a computer-generated fake. Okay, one last candidate to consider. In or out? What do you think? It says that this person is from Narnia. Narnia is a fictional place. It doesn't exist in real life. So this CV must be fake too. A woman called the police and reported that she was robbed. She said that she was in a restaurant bathroom, fixing her makeup when someone attacked her from behind. She couldn't see the person and didn't know what they looked like. The police didn't believe her. Why? The woman was fixing her makeup, so she was looking in the mirror. If someone tried to approach her from the back, she would definitely see the person. So she lied and made up the whole story. Mrs. Cook went on vacation with her three daughters, Kaya, Ruby, and Emma. They were on the beach, and Mrs. Cook had to leave to solve some business issues. The girls stayed, but their mother banned them from going into the water without her supervision. So they were supposed to read or build sandcastles. When Mrs. Cook returned, she knew that one of her daughters didn't listen to her. Which one? It's Kaya. Look, her hair is wet. This wouldn't happen if she didn't go into the water. There was a robbery in a neighborhood. Someone stole the seeds of rare and beautiful flowers from Mrs. Patterson, which she brought from abroad. The police interrogated several neighbors. Mr. Clark said, I don't work in my garden at all. Mrs. Moore said, Mrs. Patterson showed me these seeds and gave me a couple of them, but I'd never steal anything. Mr. Campbell said, I'd mind my own business. Who stole the seeds? It was Mr. Clark. He said that he didn't take care of his garden, but his garden looks way too nice to be abandoned. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and fun day at a club and asked her daughters what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she'd been watching TV all day. Elle said that she'd spent a day in the water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellum could tell that one of her daughters lied and had actually spent all day studying. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the TV is unplugged, but there's a book with her in bed. She's definitely been reading it. On the weekend, Kira and her friends were supposed to celebrate a birthday of a friend online. But Kira didn't feel like it and didn't show up. On Monday, in school, she explained that something had happened and she hadn't had electricity or internet all day. So she'd spent the day in front of the computer writing her midterm paper. Her friends didn't believe her. Why? If there was no electricity, she wouldn't be able to work on her computer because it doesn't work without electricity. I'll keep checking how attentive you are, and here are some more tasks for you. Now I'll show you two apartments and you have to figure out which one of them was robbed. Ready to start? Here's the first pair. What do you say? This apartment has a broken window, so obviously it's this one. Okay, great. Now the next one. Two apartments of two different people. Which one was robbed? This one is way too trash to be a regular mess. I bet it was robbed. 
another pair of apartments. Can you see which one someone had broken in? There are dirt stains on the floor. Someone was up here in boots. So I think that's the apartment that was robbed. Okay, we'll keep looking at apartments. But now your task is to say who do you think lives there? What profession does the person have? Let's start out easy. What about this apartment? Paintings, brushes, it definitely belongs to an artist. What about this one? Do you have any ideas? Punching bag, boxing gloves, dumbbells, and some other sports equipment. I'd say there's a boxer living there. Take a closer look here. What are your thoughts? A huge desk, many monitors and keyboards, a microphone, a headset, posters of some video games. I bet it's a room of a gamer or streamer. What about this nice and clean room? Do you see something that could give away the profession of the person who lives there? There's a ballet bar and there are also some tutus in the wardrobe. It's the room of a ballerina. And some more tasks for you. I'll show you some photos and you'll have to find what's wrong or odd about them. Here's the first one. What do you say? There are people on the surface of the moon, but they're not wearing any spacesuits. Another space-related picture. Do you see a mistake? Look closer. It's not the moon, it's Saturn. What about this photo? Do you see something odd here? Look at the way this guy is eating a banana. Maya is a witch. She's been looking for her missing cat all morning. Can you help her? The cat is over here. Maya is heading to her best friend, Sandra. She brings her something delicious. It looks square from the outside, but it looks round when opened. Also, it looks like a triangle when taken out. Can you guess the name of the food? It's a pizza. On the way, Maya decides to take a new route. She finds herself in the middle of an unfamiliar street and sees some cute little houses. All except two are blue. Also, all except two houses are red and all except two are purple. Can you figure out how many houses of each color are present on that street? Let's focus on the first two statements. We can fairly assume that two houses are not red and two houses are not blue. Now, one of those houses that are not red can be blue. Similarly, one of the non-blue houses can be red. If we remember the third statement that all except two houses are purple, we can conclude that the street has only one red, one blue, and one purple house. Maya enters Sandra's kitchen. Can you count the exact number of frogs in this location? This one is just a picture. Sandra shows Maya two pictures of her sisters. Ella lives alone, while Elsa lives with her fiancé. Can you guess which one is Elsa?
It's the first lady. She has two towels in her bathroom, while Ella only has one. Maya asks Sandra, can you make the sum of 60 by using three times the same number? Sandra replies, easy, 20 plus 20 plus 20. But there's one more way to do so. Can you figure it out? The other way is 55 plus 5. Maya needs help in her magic shop, so she invites Harry for a job interview. When Harry arrives, he looks pretty nervous, so Maya offers him some hot coffee. She puts the cup in front of him and asks, What's before you? Harry replies, Tea. After hearing the answer, Maya hires this candidate immediately. Can you guess why? If the answer was coffee, Maya would never have asked such an easy question. She meant the alphabet U, the letter T, comes before a U. That's why Maya is impressed by Harry's answer. Harry shows Maya three cards from a standard deck face down. He says, to the left of the queen, there are one or two jacks. To the right of the jack are one or two jacks. To the right of the club, there are one or two diamonds. To the left of the diamond, are one or two diamonds. Can you guess what the three cards are? The Jack of Clubs, Jack of Diamonds, and Queen of Diamonds, or Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Clubs, and Queen of Diamonds. Maya tells Harry, let me show you some Focus Pocus too. I can make the number one disappear by adding something to it. Can you guess how? She needs to add a letter G before one, and it will be gone. Simple. Maya leaves her magic shop to get some lunch. In a while, she returns and finds Harry unconscious on the floor in the storage room. She calls doctors and questions three persons standing nearby. Billy says, I was checking out the shelf with love potions when I heard weird noises from the storage. But I didn't bother. I thought Harry just dropped some stuff. Scarlet says, I came here to buy the missing ingredient for my revenge potion. I don't have time for this. And Bella says, I came here for red candles, but the seller was absent. Can you guess what happened here? Take a look at Scarlet's recipe. The missing ingredient is a spider. Harry got bitten by a venomous spider when he tried to get it out of this broken jar. There's a tiny bite on his right arm. Next Sunday, Maya receives a call from Sandra at 7 a.m. Sandra is very excited because she had found a recipe for an immortality potion in her library. Maya arrives at Sandra's house at 10 a.m. and finds her lying unconscious on the floor. All her books are gone. Maya calls the police. The detective arrives immediately and questions three suspects. Sandra's husband, Frank, says, I'm a school teacher. I haven't been home all morning because I had four classes on my schedule. Shelly, the housekeeper, says, I had a day off and spent time with my boyfriend. And Bob, the gardener, says, I've been planting roses in the backyard all morning. I haven't even entered the house yet. After hearing all three stories, the detective knows exactly who's a liar. What about you? Frank is lying. He said he'd been at school, but schools are closed on Sundays. Thankfully, Maya saved a screenshot with the recipe on her phone. Now she's making a potion for Sandra. Unfortunately, the last four ingredients in the recipe are encoded. Here's the first one. It's a fruit that is always sad. Can you figure it out?
It's a blueberry. Also, she needs to add something that has an ear but cannot hear. Any ideas what it might be? Corn. The next one is a cheese that is made backward. Eat them. In the final ingredient is a room that you can eat. Maya needs to add a mushroom. Maya is visiting Sandra in the hospital. She gives her the magic potion and Sandra gets well immediately. On the way back, Maya meets three doctors in the lobby, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you guess who? The first doctor is wearing a dirty coat but it doesn't prove that he's a fake. Meanwhile, this handsome bearded doctor has a picture of a woman on his badge, which means that he had stolen someone else's pass. As for the third person, she's wearing colorful nail extensions, which is against common sanitary rules, so she can't be a doctor. Maya runs away from the imposters and finds herself in a creepy abandoned part of the hospital. Finally, she sees three doors, but each door is hiding some danger. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first door. There's a wicked wizard waiting for Maya behind the second door. And there's a magical portal leading to a black hole behind the third door. Can you help Maya choose the safest option to escape? She should choose the first door. Look out the window. It's a new moon. Werewolves are only dangerous on a full moon. Maya escapes successfully and calls her sister Wendy who lives in a village. Wendy says, come over and we'll figure it out. Maya boards a train. Maya notices these four passengers. One of them is a famous thief. Can you guess who? This elegant lady is a thief. The first guy is reading about her crimes in his newspaper. Finally, Maya arrives at Wendy's house. She spots one odd detail about this place right away. Can you see it too? It's too risky to leave the iron in such a dangerous position. Maya enters the living room and spots two weird details. What about you? Take a closer look at the calendar. There's no June 31st. Also, this chair only has three legs. Maya starts to suspect that Wendy is under a spell. To test her logical thinking, she offers her this riddle. There are eight brothers that look alike. They're considered to be weak, yet they protect the king in every battle. If they move ahead, they never turn back. Who are they? Wendy failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The eight brothers are pawns in the chess game. After a long search, Maya finds a spell that will break all black magic, but it's locked in this safe that requires a seven-digit code. Can you help Maya open the safe? There are exactly seven books on the shelf above the safe. It's a hint. Each book has a Roman numeral on its spine. So, the code is 2113542.